Art and a job are similar in so many endless ways, but there seems to be only one thing that makes the two different. If you ask a manager why he does his job, you may get many answers. But perhaps an underlying and often unmentioned reason is because of the monetary reward. But if you ask an artist, say a dancer, why he dances, you may also get various reasons. But a major and common reason is because he just loves to dance. Artists do what they do because they either like it, love it, or they are passionate about it. Is it because of money? No. With this difference, it is not to say that managers and employees do not like, love, or are not passionate about what they do. In fact, they usually do, but there are also things that are part and parcel unlikable and unlovable about these jobs. Problems, stress, pressures along with them. But despite these things, in addition to the love, they keep holding on because of, among others, the monetary reward, which they indubitably need to survive. Speaking of survival, this brings us to a very basic definition of art by comic theorist and cartoonist Scott McCloud. He said, Art, as I see it, is any human activity which doesn't grow out of either of our species' two basic instincts, survival and reproduction. You may say that this definition is very broad, thus making almost anything be considered as an art. But from it, we can just conclude that one does art not to survive, and survival can mean doing a job to earn money for the necessities of life. Drucker stressed how important innovation is in companies. Any existing organization, whether a business, a church, a labor union, or a hospital, goes down fast if it does not innovate. Conversely, any new organization, whether a business, a church, a labor union, or a hospital, collapses if it does not manage. Not to innovate is the single largest reason for the decline of existing organizations. Not to know how to manage is the single largest reason for the failure of new ventures. But even in coming up with innovations in companies, it is not just a matter of how great the ideas are, but it is also the money or the value that the ideas can add. As Matthew Gans said it, if you have a creative idea and it doesn't create value, it's not technology, it's art. After the ideation process or generation of new ideas, when ideas are then being analyzed whether they can become products, it is a big test of the value they will add to the business. However, does the importance of business sense get in the way of creativity? Are there people who might be discouraged to think, develop, or even just speak up about their ideas? But in contrast to the norm of keeping the balance between creativity and business sense, Steve Jobs, the genius behind Apple, the number one most innovative company in the world, has another approach. Simply, it is putting products before profits. He said, My passion has been to build an enduring company where people were motivated to make great products. Everything else was secondary. Sure, it was great to make a profit, because that was what allowed you to make great products. But the products, not the profits, were the motivation. And that perhaps must be one of Jobs' most important legacies. If perhaps he were the only real genius creative behind everything of Apple, what would then become of Apple if he were gone? The list to be done is, yes, to leave a company where employees would be motivated to do great work, with the number one motivation being just to do great work and not for the profits. It is nothing new. It is a character of an artist.